what is the matrix? Well, it's a siphoning of your energy and your consciousness at the most macro level, right? Go above finances, above food, above healthcare, above media, above war. It's a siphoning of your energy, your life force, your consciousness. And so we live in this system where most people can't get out of the lower levels of consciousness and you can't possibly entertain the types of questions that we're talking about right now. Why the hell are you going to ask these types of questions when you don't know how you're about to pay your rent in two weeks? Yeah. And you don't have enough money if your transmission were to go out on your 17 year old car to replace that. So you're just fingers crossed, right? And you're just trying to get by. And this is something that I think about a lot because there's really two worlds. There's two worlds that people live in, right? And they're polar opposite. And so I think that's, you know, I can speak for both of us when I say that that's a huge driving force in the work that we both do in the world. You do it from a, a spirituality and a easing suffering lens. And I do it from more of a uh, financial and a a little bit more of a 3D lens, but we're both doing the same thing and driven by the same why in that sense. Yeah. So many people are unable to ask these kinds of questions, let alone do anything about them, right? And I've come to experience in my own journey, for example, when I was like head down, not where I want to be, you know, in debt, living with my mom, I was up against a lot, right? At least that was in my mind I was. I had a long way to go. You can only ask so deep of questions when you haven't yet met your basic human needs. Mm -hmm. And then as you start to shift and advance yourself in life, you reach financial, let's say, comfortability. Then you reach financial independence. Then you reach financial freedom. That's the system's worst nightmare because now you have nothing but time, resources, and influence to think about these problems and do something about them. And to me, that is the culmination and the connection between your work and my work, which is that both of these things matter. You need yep. to have the consciousness and the heart to serve humanity and to see that there is something seriously wrong with the way that this planet is operating. But you also need the resources, the wealth, the financial literacy, the legal literacy to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So that's what, you know, that's some of what comes to mind when I watch that. Like, you know, we both have the same stances on protests, you know, not going to do much. But at the same time, what that is a sign of is a fourth turning, people being fed up, people, people doing something about it. And they're at least, no pun intended, marching in the right direction, <laughs> right? <laughs> Eventually, if you continue down that path, asking the right questions, demanding answers, you might stumble upon a real solution that's a little more uh, sturdy than, you know, protesting or trying to block streets. Right. Yeah, your point's super valid, man, that the physical and the spiritual have to be balanced and integrated together. You can't just have one without the other or you're imbalanced still. And, you know, this is one of the plans of the negative polarity, the controllers of the planet is that they want to keep humanity like constantly drinking from a fire hose of problems and mm -hmm. chaos, right? As long as they can keep humanity drowning in problems and travesties and calamities, then everyone's just in survival mode, which means they're not going to be asking the important questions of why is everything exactly. going wrong? Why is life so hard? Does it need to be this way? You don't have the luxury of asking those questions when you're trying to keep your head above the water, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why Bitcoin is a net positive. That's why these kinds of global protests are a big positive because it shows people are waking up to this. And if there's another vaccine mandate, if there's another whatever the next mandate is, these global protests are showing me signs that humanity is still continuing to wake up even after COVID has ended. And I think whatever it is they roll out next, and we're going to talk about what that may be in a second, there's going to be a much bigger, no, thank you. We do not consent 
kind of response from humanity. And it's only going to keep going in that direction. J yep. Just like the Vax mandate, I think was a big wake up call for the controllers of our planet because they didn't think that we were, they were going to get 30 to 40% of people saying, no, I won't take your jab. They probably thought it was going to be like 10%. And they're like, no problem. We'll just throw those people in jail and call them terrorists and move on. And it didn't work out that way, right? So this yeah. is a positive sign that we're continuing to wake up to the the plans and the strategies of the controllers and the divine intelligence will continue to filter into humanity as we more and more wake up to this, those more helpful and effective perspectives like common law and sovereignty that will really begin to liberate humanity. Amen. The world is changing at an almost unfathomable pace. EVs, artificial intelligence, the internet of things, augmented reality, virtual reality, cyber wars, cryptocurrencies, digital money, the list goes on and on. And if you're like most people, you don't really have a clue about the gravity of the shifts that we're undertaking, that we're currently living through, let alone how to capitalize on these opportunities at hand. I don't want that to be the reality for you, which is why I spent dozens and dozens of hours creating our absolutely free wealth creation ebook that goes in depth into our investing thesis and the way that we see the world and will give you a foundational education on how to start preparing you and your family for the shifts that are currently underway behind the scenes. In just a few years, the world is going to look unrecognizable and I don't want you to be left behind. Check out the link in the description below to gain access. Much love. So do we want to move on to our second segment of the show? Yeah, let's move into our second segment, which is reaction clips now. And um, I want to give a quick preface, Jeremy, before we get into these reaction clips. You know, the, again, the purpose of this show, the Great Awakening show, is to empower the listener with positive, enlightened perspectives, encouraging perspectives on this Great Awakening that's happening and sort of like global news that, as we know, 99% of all news headlines in the world are negatively oriented but here we're giving you that 1%. We're going to give you the, the light side perspective of things. And sometimes that requires us to get really integrated in understanding the strategies of the dark side, because you can only know the light by the dark, right? Most people today, Jeremy, are living in this assumption or belief that we're, we live in a purely physical universe. It's just physical objects. That's all. There's no underlying forces behind the physical events that happen. It's all just, you know, inert matter happening randomly. But of course, this is emphatically not the case because we live in a spiritual universe, which is to say a metaphysical universe uh, beyond the physical. Those who've risen to power in our planet are people that could not have done so unless they understand these metaphysics, these natural laws that govern the universe. And they use these laws to their advantage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the laws of karma, uh, the law of cause and effect, the law of attraction. They sow seeds of fear in through the mainstream media to keep everybody in a fear state so they can keep us on the puppet strings, right? These are basic strategies that the negative polarity uses. And so they use all of these laws to their advantage because they know most people are unconsciously ignorant of them and that gives them a position of power, right? So for us as, as a collective to wake up to how these metaphysical laws work is the greatest thing we can do to empower ourselves to stand in the light and then see the darkness from the light and say, no, thank you. We're not going to play that game anymore. If we don't see the laws of the universe as they are and how they work, then we'll keep falling ignorantly into their traps, right? And so this preface I'm giving you is to say that in today's episode, we're going to talk a bit about sort of what we expect, what we may expect to see from these controllers on our planet, what their next steps may look like. But this is in no way to, to give a kind of like fearful or dark perspective of what's happening in the world. It's, it should always feel like a very empowering thing when we start to understand the chess game that's being played on the highest level, because that chess game is all surrounding metaphysical laws, natural laws that God put in place. And so if chess is our analogy, the rules of chess, right? Which piece can do what and so forth, um, how you win the game, checkmate, this and that, those represent the metaphysical laws of the universe. 
So if you think about how you would need to go about telling somebody what you're going to do before you do it, then you can start to understand how the game is played. We talked about this all through the rabbit hole series. I think we touched on this, Jeremy, in our last episode, that because of the laws of karma, those controllers, they can't just malevolently steamroll over humanity however they want because they create negative karma that comes back on them because the universe works on balance. So they've learned over time, probably over thousands of years of doing this, that they have to somehow give a tell to the public of what they're going to do because then they get your free will involved and they avoid the karmic consequences because even silence is a form of acquiescence under metaphysical law. If somebody tells you what they're going to do and you don't give your free will to say, no, I'm not interested in that, then you are by way sort of consenting to that and they get to alleviate the negative karma they would otherwise attract. So if you think about if you were them, how would you have to go about telling someone what you're about to do to them <laughs> before you do it, then you, you come to the conclusion pretty quick that there's really just one possible way that you could do that without giving yourself away. The, the wolf in sheep's clothing, right? Is that you would have to pretend like the things you're about to do to them are not being caused by you, but are coming from somewhere else. And hence we have, you know, Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, Joe Biden, who've been saying for many months now, we fear that there's going to be a coming cyber attack from Iran, from Russia, from China. You notice they always blame it on our adversaries that, oh, Iran's planning this cyber attack. First of all, how would you know if your adversary was planning a cyber attack? <laughs> That's not how the art of war works. <laughs> but it's like, you see how the game is played? Oh, oh, there's a big bad thing coming. Look over there. They're the ones who are going to do it. And then while you look over there, I take the money out of your back pocket. This is the chief strategy, right? So Jesus's admonition in the gospels to be as wise as serpents, but as innocent as doves is very um, poignant advice for our times because the positive path is like a dove. It's innocent. It's pure. But the negative path is like a serpent, you know, cunning and wise and tricky. So when we're interfacing with people we know and love and trust, we can afford to be innocent as doves. But when we're confronted with negative forces that represent power and control, we can't afford to be innocent as doves. We have to be wise as serpents. We have to be able to predict what they may want to do next so that we can actually avoid their next move, just like in the game of chess, right? I know you play some chess, Jeremy. I love playing chess. When you're playing chess, the whole art of the game is to really both anticipate what you want to do while also being aware of what your opponent is trying to do. So if you understand the rules of chess and you're surveying your opponent's layout, you can know pretty quickly what their next possible options are. You know exactly what they're able to do as if you were in their position. And then you can move your pieces in such a way that avoid the traps they're trying to set for you. And so this is how the negative polarity works, right? It's just a chess match. And so to be a wise as a serpent is to understand the game that the serpent plays and play it better. And if that sounds stressful to anyone, I'll give you this encouragement that this isn't actually challenging to do. Because again, the negative polarity has only a few possible chess moves that they can use. Controlling people, especially vast amounts of people, is extraordinarily difficult. It's the most difficult endeavor you could ever undertake. So there's not a whole lot of ways you can do it. There's just a couple of methods that you can use. And so in our reaction clips, I'm going to be playing some clips for you, Jeremy, that will highlight this fact. But um, it's really about like looking at what events have taken place in our past. You know, we had 9-11 and then whoop, Patriot Act, give us your rights to survey you. And then we say, okay, so that's how they do it. They make a disaster. They, they, whether they do it themselves or they allow foreign entities to do it, doesn't matter. We won't get into that. They allow or create a tragedy, a crisis, and then they provide the solution very quickly while everybody's in a fear state. Okay, so that's one strategy. That's an example, right, of how you can look at the past and history and learn the way the game is played. And the more you do that, Jeremy, the more you realize, yeah, it's, it's actually just one strategy. They just do the exact same strategy every single time in slightly unique ways, 
But if you're looking at the underlying rules being played, it's the same exact play out of the same exact playbook every time. We call it the Hegelian method, right? Problem, reaction, solution. And so whether it's CBDCs, vaccines, all these other things we could mention, it's the same play on all of those things. It's create a problem, control the reaction in the news, fear, fear, panic, panic, and then offer the solution. If you liked this clip and you want to watch another one that we think you'll love, click right here. If you want to watch the full episode, click right here. We'll see you next time.